This is the Cyclin Bat Mini 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and it is the smallest 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that I have ever seen. On Amazon these retail for $249, but right now there's a 5% coupon and there's also a 35% coupon making this $149. We're going to take a look at it this time on Ham Radio Tube. And here it is. Guys, when I say this thing is tiny, this thing is tiny. I don't even have to zoom my camera out to get it in frame. This is freaking cool. So let's take a look. We're just under nine inches wide, uh, about eight and a quarter tall, and just under five and a half, probably five and three eighths deep. This thing is tiny, tiny, tiny. So we've got a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It's got two screw terminals here, which are either hex or a Phillips head. You've got some carrying handles here. These do feel kind of flimsy, but this battery doesn't really weigh a lot either. So I suspect uh, you probably shouldn't have any problems with that. On the back here, we've got just some uh, cautionary statements there. And then we've got the uh, features of the battery, Dis discharge cutoff 10.6 volts, max charge voltage 14.4, plus or minus 0.2 volts, max series voltage 48 volts, max continuous charge current 120 amps, max, max discharge current 120 amps, peak discharge current 300 amps for five seconds, and a temperature range of minus four Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the box, we're gonna get a few kind of manuals. We get the terminals that you saw on the battery and they also include these longer screws, which is awesome for connecting multiple wires to that. A lot of batteries don't come with longer screws and I'm actually pretty impressed they gave us longer screws because I can use those. So let's take a look at the manual here. And one thing that we're gonna note, uh, this basically says everything we just saw on the back of the battery. BMS board specification, uh, four series, uh, 100 amps, max continuous discharge, 120 amps, uh, low and high temperature protection. So it does mention temperature protection in here, and it also mentions low charge uh, temperature protection on the Amazon site, and we're gonna test that in a little bit. But other than that, the manual goes on to talk about charging it with solar panels and generators, talks about the voltage and the state of charge here. And then they go on talking about connecting them in series and parallel, how to wire them up in different ways. So they give you a bit of information on how to actually connect the batteries, which is helpful, but we're interested more in what this battery can do. So the first thing that absolutely floored me uh, aside from the physical size of this battery was the capacity. One of the first things I do when I get a battery is charge it up. I let it sit overnight and I do a discharge test and this is no different. I did a discharge test of 10 amps and this had 105 amp hours in it. I am absolutely floored at the amount of capacity they were able to put in this battery. This absolutely passes the capacity test. Doesn't make any sense how they can fit that much energy into something this small, but somehow they did. But now we got to put this thing through its paces. So let's hook up an inverter and see what this thing can do. So I've got everything set up. I'm using one aught pure copper welding wire hooked up to a 250 amp breaker and a 3000 watt inverter. We're going to start with the heat gun. The BMS says it is rated for 120 amps of continuous discharge current. So let's give that a shot. And this heat gun should be right at about 120 amps on high. So let's just fire it up and see what we get. Yep, right at 120 amps there. 121-ish, fluctuating a little bit. 1330 watts, no problem. So we'll let this go for a few minutes and see what it does. All right, so it's been a solid five minutes. The meter was showing 122 amps, handled it like a champ. Let's see, getting a little bit warm, but I suspect that's probably because we're right about the rating of these wires. We're at 92 degrees on the terminals, so not bad at all. Now let's see what we can do to trip the BMS if it actually has overcurrent protection. 
Let's find out. Now we'll turn on our friend, Mr. Space Heater. We'll get this guy cranked up. We're pulling about 89 amps, about 1,000 watts. Let's turn the heat gun on low. Got 152 amps. Now the instruction manual says the overcurrent protection is actually at 360 amps. So I'm curious what will happen with this. We may not get it to trip. All right, let's kick this thing into high gear. 200 amps, 2180 watts. Let this go for a few minutes. So it's been about two minutes now. Our current's dropped down to 196, I suspect, because we're kind of overloading these wires. But let's go ahead and kick the vacuum on here. 270 amps. We're getting some voltage drop, though. We're only 10.9 volts on the inverter there. But it did surge over 300. Let's try that again. Watch that meter. It peaked up to about 348 for a second. But we're right at about 3,000 watts here, 268 amps. Let's let this go for a minute. So we're definitely getting some voltage drop in the wire. The terminals with this load is still 11.85 volts, but the uh, inverter here, we're at 10.8 volts, 10.7 fluctuating a little bit, and 265 amps still which also tells me that my breaker might not be any good. Now we weren't able to trip the BMS, which is a little iffy on that, even though the manual says the overcurrent protection is actually 360 amps. I don't have a way to test that, but what I can test is the low temperature charge protection. Let's check that out. So this battery has been freezing in my 12 volt cooler overnight, at least 12 hours. It is frozen solid. So let's test if the low temperature charge protection works. I'm gonna plug in a 20 amp charger and let's see what happens. All right, charger's on, putting in 20 amps. Let's see if it detects and shuts it down. Does not look like it. So that's a bummer. Yeah, I don't want to keep it going. I don't want to destroy the cells, but doesn't look like any low temperature charging protection. That's a fail. So there we have it. No low temperature charge protection, even though they advertise it. No tripping of the BMS, but it did handle that current like a champ. It is still pretty warm. Even though all of those shortcomings are real, it's kind of hard for me to not love this battery simply for the fact of how small it is, I got 105 amp hours of capacity out of it. That's what matters most to me. I'm making a battery box out of this thing. That's all there is to it. As far as the BMS is concerned, so long as it balances the cells with something like this, I'm fine with that. In the real world, I'm never gonna come close to pulling the current that we pull in these tests. So for me, you know, in the real world, I'd probably be pulling five, 600 watts out of this thing max. And at $149, it's kind of hard to pass up. So I've done everything I can to show you this battery in, in the real world and show you what it does, how it performs. The decision is up to you whether or not you want to pick something up like this. If you do, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description. And until next time, my name is Mike, KMRD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube 73.